We have made it this far. We've made it this far from Kim. Welcome to Avenues of Wisdom. I'm also an occupational therapy student. There's many parts to us. There's many parts to us. I want to relay that to you. And if you haven't been here before, subscribe, like, comment, because I have some advice for you on your first level two for field work, as I just started mine today. Your level twos. How can you be best prepared to be successful in your rotation? Just like, well, I've had one day, but I've learned so much in my one day. I wanted to share it with you. Going into what I experienced. So this is a 60 bed subacute facility, um, mainly geriatric population. There is, there's ortho, there's cardiac, there is neuro. There's a wide variety um, of things going on here with this geriatric population. And the OT that I'm with, my fieldwork educator, he's awesome. Everyone's awesome. And what I see and what you have to be prepared for is a lot of co-treatment uh, with PT, speech, um, and communication as far as everyone's kind of, you know, uh, running around trying to, you know, make sure they're on the same page when they're seeing this patient. As are, there's a lot of patients coming in and going that are leaving from the hospital to this, you know, the subacute. So they're going to be here at this facility from five to, f to probably 14 days. And that's where, as far as us as OTs, we're helping them get back to their, we want them to be independent so that they can go home. Um, and so we're working on, you know, their ADLs, their activities of daily living, uh, your grooming, your dressing, your toileting, your feeding, um, eating, all of these areas so that they can be independent and leave this facility. And what I had found most common after this first day, which felt like I had been there for a while. That's how nice these people were. First day, as far as what was common among this whole population was they were using the Bartho index. So this, it's kind of like an, an ordinal scale. It's measuring all of your areas of your ADLs. So your grooming, your bathing, your eating, every single area, and it's measuring how independent you are. The higher score that you have on this index out of 100, your more independence, the lower the lower score means you're more dependent for help. Um, so that's kind of something that I would get familiar with. If you're entering this population, this geriatric population, they also use it for a lot of stroke patients, which they also have there. And um, I thought that was so interesting. And it's pretty quick to do um, when you're assessing the patient, seeing what they can do. You're going into the room, it's just seeing how they how they move, let's get up, let's go to the bathroom, let's kind of see what you can do. There's also their plan of care. They carry iPads and they just walk around with their iPads if they need a document, so it's always with them. They're not, you know, um, they'll sit down in areas and, and document, but that iPad is kind of always at hand in case they need to, you know, relay this information because, you know, you could be seeing, you know, around seven to eight patients a day and it can, you know, sometimes be a little bit overwhelming. So to have that iPad with all of the information in there and just to type it in your daily notes um, real quick and then you can move on to your next patient because the documentation is a huge part of um, the patient care besides actually being hands-on with the patient. And this is in the times of many changes. So there, there's an area straight for uh, COVID unit and they had an OT designated for that unit and then the rest of the OTs were taking the rest of the facility. So that's how they divided theirs up and I learned so much we how much you can just walk into the room um, and see what the patient is able to do. Obviously there's some information before or their notes if they've been seen um, previous days that you can build off of but it's always we're working towards their independence and their functionality for their daily living and that is the goal for all areas whether that's that's dressing toileting eating and that's a huge part of what ot does um, especially with this geriatric population so those are some of the things 
I learned on my first day actually so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you updated this week because I think it's important and you know I would like to know this information and we'll see how I'm doing on day five yeah this is my friend oh gosh she's gorgeous she's a Norfolk she's a pine a northern pine she's Norfolk Island Pine. Her name is Earthy. So she's a new addition to my, my desk area when I come home. She's there. We're gonna watch her grow and stay tuned. It's about 4.45. For free, I can breathe. And you know, Completed. Um, I got to administer the mocha today, addressing um, individuals' cognition, where they're at, their attention, their language, uh, processing, their concentration, all of those areas. That was cool. I got to do more hands-on things with each of the patients, actually, and evaluation today. Got to fill out part of that and um yeah what a time I made it, day five, first week of field work. First week. So I'm here, I'm living, I'm breathing, and I just came from field work, literally drove right here, pulled up, and I thought this would be a good spot to film what I've learned my first week and what I wanna give advice for you so that you can be successful in your level two field work. And the number one thing I learned this week is that I dove right in. I felt comfortable with the patients and my CI, he's awesome. He let me have, he let me lead a couple sessions. Um, I was able to document. It's more of a narrative, like I said earlier this week, your soap note, it's kind of just a summary of what you've done um, with the patient on how their ADLs, um, their independence, what types of exercises they're tolerating, tolerating relating to their, their ADL participation. And so that's my number one advice. When you start your field work, you need to just dive right in. There's no such thing as a failure. It's just lessons. And if you're open to learning, I think your CI will see that. And um, I think it'll make a big difference. And that's what I did this week. And that's what I'm most proud of myself for um, and reflecting on what I've learned. And I've met so many great people there. They're just, they're awesome. They're beautiful people. Uh, I think people who work in healthcare, they kind of have just like a service of the heart. So that's what I'm most proud of too, is learning. I've just met so many people from my first week there and they were open to me, open arms if I needed anything and just uh, never treated me otherwise than, you know, just a person who was coming in, uh, you know, learning. So that's what I'm grateful for. Another piece of advice with documentation. That's one thing I wanted to work on was improving my documentation. My strengths was with people, being a people person, being comfortable, working with patients and being hands-on, coming in the room, you know, um, kind of charming them so that I could be able to uh, implement whatever interventions or work with them with their ADLs. With this, this geriatric population, you're seeing a lot of the same people every day. So you're seeing how either they're declining. I saw a few patients declining this first week, um, which is kind of hard to see, but I also saw you know, uh, a favorite patient of mine that I got to work with, uh, my CI. He let me work with them a little bit more independently, um, you know, educating her on her shower transfer safety, uh, using her assistive you know, equipment, the, the socket, the, the reacher to help her uh, with her femur fracture and actually you know, use those assistive 
equipment or devices so that it could be easier on her for her return to home eventually for her overall independence because that's what occupational therapy's goal is to get our patients home oh my ca also you know with transfers with some patients simulating their home transfer with their toilet in the bathroom so that when they go home it kind of mirrors that and they're more comfortable in their transfers that's another thing that i learned but i had a great first week and i wanted to shout out to all the people at the facility that i've that I'm at, I think they're just so welcoming, and um, I am where I'm supposed to be, and I, and I can update you on the journey. Like, comment, uh, let me know if you want to know more about this, or if you have any more questions, I'm going to document my journey. Don't forget to subscribe, and we all could use a little bit more wisdom, uh, even, you know, my occupational therapy students. This is advice for you. This is the stuff I would love to learn um, if I were in this position as well. So I wish you all a great week. Take care, sending my love and the sunlight and this beautiful, this beautiful sunset. Take care.